Let's go ahead and talk about the hierarchy in Google Cloud Platform. And this is going to contain organizations, projects, resources, and folders. When it comes to Google Cloud, the main facet that is going to really facilitate the organization of your services that you're using will be called a project. A project is really meant to not only segment your resources, but also for billing and accounting purposes. It really gives you a great way to essentially provide for what is called chargeback or showback, for example, in your organization as well. But it also enables you to also consider having all your projects to be part of what's called an organization. I'll talk about how all this will play in here shortly. But basically, each GCP project is going to have a name, a project ID, a project number. And when we go through the demo on projects, uh, we'll talk more about that, and you'll see exactly how this all comes together. Now, a project is really meant to facilitate organization of your services, objects, and also for billing and accounting purposes. Now, you can see over here we have a project name, a project ID, and a project number. Now, basically, the project name is really meant for you to identify what is this project for. Is it for production? Is it for a money-making application for your company? Is it a SQL database? Uh, is it going to be for resources only in India or resources that are only in Boston, whatever that scenario is. It's just really a way for you to organize things in a logical manner that makes sense to you. Project ID is actually very important because we're going to be using the project ID for a lot of our G Cloud commands, also identify what the project is as well, and especially when we want to tie in, for example, a service account or anything of that nature. So we'll find out how the project ID plays into our resources with Google Cloud. Now the project number is really a number that we can't change, and it's just assigned at the time of creation, and it's really meant for Google to essentially reference your resources uh, in the back end of Google Cloud. Now projects, again, are going to be used for these purposes. We could track resources and quota usage, enable billing, manage permissions and credentials, and enable APIs as well as services. For example, when we deploy Cloud SQL Compute Engine in a new project, that API for that service has to be enabled. When it comes to the hierarchy of Google Cloud, we have, of course, our projects, which are located here, but then we have the opportunity to tie in what's called an organizational node. Now, when we go to the demo, you'll see this uh, come into play, of course, but just realize that this is a way we could structure our G Suite resources or cloud identity resources and allows us to have basically what's called an org node, which is going to do what? It's going to organize all our enterprise resources under basically G Suite or cloud identity. This gives you an organization, uh, as an organization that is, the ability to maintain centralized control of all your Google Cloud projects. If we just had projects and we were a large organization, then it would be very hard to keep track of all the different resource spending that's going on or what services are being used. But also, too, how do we manage permissions? And then we have the ability to add what's called a folder. A folder basically creates basically more granularity for our resources. Here's an example of a project uh, and how we would tie in services as part of that project. Now, when we talk about basically an organization, we want to ensure that we understand what a resource is in Google Cloud. And that is what? That could be any of the Google Cloud services that we're using, anything under a project, any APIs, etc. 
But basically, if we already are using G Suite, let's say, and we have a top level domain with Google Cloud, we could simply tie in those resources to our uh, basically cloud environment as well. It's part of the hierarchy. But the main thing that we'd want to use an organization for is that it enables the organization or the company, I should say, to basically be able to follow a corporate life cycle. Now, if this employee leaves, what do we do with their email account? What do we do with the resources they're using in Google Cloud? Do we save them? Do we delete them? Do we assign them to a new user? This is very important when it comes to a life cycle. When we're taking the exam, a couple of things I just want to point out is that a network can only belong to one project. There's a limit of five networks and 100 subnets per project. And then there's some other notes that you'll want to review as well. For the exam, we want to realize that a Google Cloud Platform API is going to interact with project-based resources. Now, one thing to point out is that resources are going to be global, regional, or zonal-based. That's really important to realize to understand the types of resources that are being used. For example, if we have a virtual machine image and that virtual machine image is not attached to like a local SSD, then we could move that image somewhere else. But if it's attached to a local resource, then that's really a local resource. So we can't just move it around. Quotas. Quotas are part of the Google Cloud Platform projects. It allows us to set basically limits on our resources. For example, we may not want to have more than, let's say, 20 projects, um, you know, spun up at any given time. Well, we can set that limit. If we don't want certain APIs to be spun up, we could set limits. Again, the quota is basically um, really focused on two areas. One is basically services that are free and services that are not free. And Google also imposes quotas basically as well to protect runaway usage, usage for example, in your organization, but also protects them as well uh, from many different aspects uh, that we could just imagine, right? Performance issues, um, having uh, too many resources spun up and you know, not getting compensated for whatever that situation is. Also too, GCP, when it comes to accounts, we're gonna assign them or associate them to a G Suite domain or a Gmail user account. This allows us again to provide granularity and also be part of the organizational structure. Now with GCP, we want to, for example, allow an outside user, we could simply add their Gmail or G Suite account to a project. Therefore, when we add a user to a project, they're only authorized to use that project. But we could also get even more granular to only allow that user to use certain services or to access certain um, object shares, whatever that uh, reality is. On the exam, test tip is to understand what a hierarchy is in Google Cloud. That is what? The organization's the top. The um, folders would be part of Cloud IEM. And then we have projects and then resources. We really want to understand how we could peer a project together. We're going to be talking about peering more in the networking part. Let's go ahead and move on to the demo.